Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, guys. Stay with me. Hey y'all. And in today's video, we're going to be doing the New Moon Report for the sixth month. Okay. You got to pronounce that right. How do you say that? S I X T H. You ain't got to say it. The I point is, <laughs> you got to pronounce that TH at the end. That that tha, that theta, is actually a tav or a tau at the end. So if you say the six month, you took the tau out and you put a sentence there. A sentence is a crutch. So instead of you saying the six month, something related to the covenant, you're saying the six months, something... I don't know, to lean on something, to, I don't know, simmage. Change in the to sim. So that is one of the reasons why we're going to be letting Ryan do the reading. Is this live? No, oh. it's not. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know what people like. People like to hear you talk. We are going to talk. <laughs> well, we are going to hear you talk. And I'm, but the plan is, is to listen to this video about the new moon. It's called the new moon in biblical perspective. And as we go, we're gonna talk. Okay. You wanna read the inter the description of it? This is the video. It's called the new moon in biblical perspective. Uh, its significance and rituals. You wanna read the description? In this video, we will explore the new moon's role in biblical tradition. We'll learn how it marked the start of Hebrew months, influenced festivals like the Feast of Trumpets, and shaped ancient Israelite life through ritual, sacrifices, and symbolic meanings. So let's go, let's let him talk a little. The New Moon in Biblical Perspective Introduction the new moon serves as a critical marker in the ancient Jewish religious calendar and social practices. This dissertation explores how the new moon is depicted in canonical texts such as the Old Testament and in the apocryphal writings of 1 Enoch, 2 Enoch, and Jubilees. Yeah, so those are the books that I had him to look in. Like we try to tell people uh, that this is a computer, it's a calculator. You know, there's people who say chat GP will tell you this, chat GPT will tell you that. And sure, it will tell you what you already know. Like it told you a grocery list last week, right? Mm -hmm. You want to talk about that? Real quick, one minute or less. I put in um, a list of things that I wanted it to present to me. Um, I gave it my budget. I told it how many um people I will be feeding and it made me out a list of um not only the um things I should shop for but as well as a recipe recipes for the um things I should shop for all including those items as well as um the price range that um I should be looking for and one other thing it gave me that I do not remember. Um, so Okay. So so somebody could somebody who wanted to mock you could say the chat GPT told you what to buy, how to cook it, and how much money to spend on. You went to chat GPT and they told you what to buy. But what they missing is is that you had to put in the numbers. Just like you would a calculator. Mm -hmm. You had to punch in um, numbers related to budget. You had to punch in numbers related to what you want. You had to punch in numbers related to family. You had to punch in, you had to put numbers into it. And all it did was calculate your numbers and give it back to you. Mm -hmm. So it's a calculator. That's all it is. Yeah, calculator, different dictionary. Um, oh, yeah, biblical expert because what we had him to do was to look at the Old Testament and the apocryphal writings 
and the writings of one Enoch, two Enoch, and Jubilees specifically because those books talk about the moon. You you ain't got too many more. Okay. You know, we could have it to run a comparison against the Book of Remembrance. But that's what we would be doing. Okay. Only thing I don't have in here, and I wish I could have took it further, was the Dead Sea Scrolls. By analyzing these sources, we gain insights into the multifaceted roles of the new moon, from its practical applications in timekeeping and ritual to its deeper symbolic meanings within the religious and cosmic frameworks of ancient Judaism. We're also looking at practical applications. Um, the symbolic meanings, um, he said religious, but I would say spiritual and cosmic uh, frameworks of um, Israel. Mm -hmm. I have to change them up a little bit. The new moon in canonical scriptures. 1.1 The Pentateuch. Genesis 1 verse 14, the creation of the sun and moon is described as serving as markers for signs, seasons, and days. This establishes the foundational role of celestial bodies in regulating time and religious observances. Exodus 12 verse 2, the new moon marks the beginning of the month and the start of the Hebrew calendar, establishing its importance in scheduling festivals and rituals. Leviticus 23 verse 24, the new moon is associated with the celebration of significant feasts, including the Feast of Trumpets, which underscores its role in the religious calendar. So, there's a backup. Some of these, I, even, I had not put together. Like, um, when he talks to Moses there at Exodus chapter 12 and 2, mm -hmm. he's, he's there at the first new moon of spring, his first new moon after the spring equinox is when he would be talking for him to say that, for him to make that, give that um, scriptural basis. Okay. So it's obviously there. Historical books, 1 Samuel 20 verses 5 and 18, 24, the new moon festival provides the backdrop for key events in David's life, including his flight from King Saul. The timing of the feast is crucial in understanding the narrative tension and political dynamics. 2 Kings for verse 23, the mention of new moon festivals in the context of Elisha's ministry reflects their ongoing significance in prophetic activities and community life. All right, so he's going a little fast. We could have had him to break out a lot on Saul, but you can tell him about Saul, and I can tell him how it relates to the new moon, because it, that's when David and... Jonathan would have been having their private meeting and we proved that in a, in a, um, a recent video because they were sure that the new moon was the next day, which means they had already cited it. That's like tonight. The only day they could have had that conversation was a night like tonight when the new moon would have appeared in the sky. And then this one about Elisha, like I hadn't, you know about that one? Protege of Elijah is almost Elijah. Yeah, but I don't know into what context he's talking about. Yeah, so there's more to dig on. And I did have him to give the verses there. So let's go on. 1.3 Psalms and Prophets Psalm 81 verse 3, new moons are celebrated as times of worship and rejoicing, emphasizing their role in communal religious life. Isaiah 66 verse 23, the new moon is envisioned as a time of worship in the future messianic kingdom, highlighting its eschatological significance. See, that one's worth going to look at, so let's go look at it. And it shall come to pass from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, it shall all flesh to worship before, says Yahuwah. Right, that's talking about, um, as he said, in um, creature tense. Start there in verse 21, if you don't mind. So. And I sh will also take of them for priests and for Levites, says the Lord. For as the new heavens and the new earth, which I will make, shall remain before me, said the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, 
shall all flesh come to worship before me, said the Lord. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcass of the men that have transgressed against me, for their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. So, you may have to watch this video twice, in other words, and pull your pen out and write down the verses that he's talking about. That's how detailed it is. Mm -hmm. Ezekiel 46 verse 1, the prophet Ezekiel describes the new moon as part of the idealized future worship practices in the new temple, indicating its enduring role in religious observance. Chapter 2, the new moon in the book of Jubilees 2. Now, before we get into Jubilees, based on those three right there, you can write a book on the new moon. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is expound on these verses that he's talking about. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. A lot of that we didn't know. Right. Even we didn't. I didn't know. I'm learning stuff from this calculator. Mm -hmm. you know? it's, it's the difference between writing out with a pencil and a piece of paper and subtracting than to be able to pull out your TI-85 or your TI-89. TI-94, I never liked the 94. Calendrical System Jubilee 6 colon 23-38. This passage provides a detailed description of the Jubilee's calendar, including the role of new moons in regulating the passage of time and the scheduling of festivals. The text outlines how new moons fit into the broader framework of the sacred calendar. Now, what he's talking about is how he's breaking out the four significant new moons and overlapping them onto his flood journey. Like each point in the in the book of Jubilee, you wanna see it? Okay. You gotta go to pseudopograph for that. And guys, you gotta get these books. Let's see if it's even still here. It might not be here no more, I think. There it is. I get through the books. Oh, it's gone. Oh, maybe it's oh, maybe it's just me. Let's see, Moses. Oh, something going on. Oh, the server is down. Okay, fine. We'll see if we got it somewhere else. <laughs> Man, they they took it from my phone too, didn't they? Stay? I remember you saying something about it. They, um, so they're hiding the books. They're straight up hiding the books. The equivalents of burning them. I mean, you just can't get to them, you just can't get to them. So go ahead and read down from about 23 down to... And on the first of the first month, and on the first of the fourth month, and on the first of the seventh month, and on the first of the tenth month are the days of remembrance. And they are the days of appointed times of four parts of a year. They are written and inscribed for an eternal witness. And Noah ordained them for himself as feasts for eternal generations because they were a memorial for him. And on the first day of the first month he was told to make an ark. And on it the land dried up. And he opened up and saw the land. And on the first day of the fourth month, the mouths of the deep of the abyss, which were beneath, were shut. And on the first of the seventh month, all of the mouths of the deeps of the earth were open, and the water began to go down into them. On the first of the tenth month, the heads of the mountains appeared, and Noah rejoiced. And therefore he ordained them for himself as feasts of remembrance forever, and thus were they ordained. Let's go on. Jubilees 50 colon 8-13, new moons are discussed in relation to the Jubilee years, emphasizing their importance in the broader calendrical system and their role in marking significant periods. Okay, so, like I say, you could write a whole book about this because we could have expounded on that. 2.2 hmm. Ritual and Symbolism Jubilees 2 colon 8, New moons are presented as part of the divine order, marking sacred times and reflecting God's covenant with humanity. Jubilee 628, the observance of new moons is tied to the covenantal themes and ritual practices, showing their integral role in maintaining the religious and social order. Chapter 3, The New Moon in 1 Enoch 3 
1 Astronomical and Apocalyptic Context 1 Enoch 72-82 This section offers a detailed account of the lunar calendar and the astronomical phenomena associated with new moons. It provides insights into the understanding of timekeeping and celestial events in the Enochian tradition. I had to teach them how the sacred calendar works. I had to teach them how Enoch works. Okay. And it ain't that he's not smart, it's just that he leans on tradition and common understanding, what everybody believes. Most people believe that in the religious world that the Enochian calendar won't work. And that book is going to be missing too. That's another one of the books that they're hiding is the, the, the hidden books, Jasher, Enoch, and Jubilees. I hope it's not because of this report. 1 Enoch 82 6-12, the new moon is interpreted symbolically within Enoch's apocalyptic visions, reflecting its role in the cosmic order and divine governance. 3.2 Theological and Cosmic Significance 1 Enoch 93 8-11, the new moon is depicted as a sign of cosmic order and divine rule, emphasizing its importance in the broader theological framework of Enoch's writings. Yeah, so when you get to those chapters, it starts to tell us how, or show us how the stars are playing a part in all of this. They're not just rocks up there. Right. You know, there, there's something to them. 1 Enoch 104 1-4, the relationship between new moons and moral teachings highlights their role in shaping ethical and spiritual understanding within the Enochian tradition. Okay, so I didn't know about that. Let's go look and see what it says. 104. I swear unto you that in heaven the angels will remember you for good before the glory of the Great One, and your names shall be written before the glory of the Great One. Be hopeful, because formerly you have been away through evil and toil, but now you shall shine like the lights of heaven, and you shall be seen, and the windows of heaven shall be opened for you. Your cry shall be heard. Cry for judgment, and it shall appear for you. For all of your tribulations shall be demanded who plundered you. Be hopeful and do not abandon your hope, because there shall be a fire for you. You are about to be making a great rejoicing like the angels of heaven. Chapter 4 of the New Moon in 2 Enoch 4 1 Calendar and Ritual Observances 2 Enoch 1 colon 1 5 References to the New Moon in the context of Enoch's heavenly journeys indicate its role in the Divine Calendar and its impact on spiritual practices. Okay, he is 2nd Enoch now. 2 Enoch 32 colon 1 6 The Heavenly Calendar and the role of New Moons in it are described reflecting their significance in the of 2 Enoch. For point 2 symbolic interpretation 2 Enoch 36 colon 1-5, the new moon's significance in Enoch's eschatological vision reveals its role in understanding divine mysteries and future events. He forgot uh, chapter 16, which includes the zodiac, where he tells you how to use the star constellations to line up your seasons. like. On the first new moon after the spring equinox, you should be looking at the constellation of the ram. And that's how you know. Or, or even tonight, when you go out there and look at the new moon, all you have to do is look past the new moon at what constellation you're looking at. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know what constellation you're looking at, uh, let's go to the coaching and fight dot shop and find, see what we can find out. And so this is what you get over at coaching and fight dot shop. The first month is over here when the days and the nights are equal. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six will be over here. And the star constellation you should be looking at is Virgo. 2 Enoch 67 colon 1 8. The eschatological implications of new moons highlight their place in the broader cosmic narrative and their impact on theological thought. Chapter 5. Comparative Analysis 5.1 Ritual Practices and Symbolic Meanings Canonical vs. Non-Canonical Texts A Comparison of the Ritual Practices and Symbolic Meanings Associated with New Moons in Canonical Texts and in 1 Enoch, 2 Enoch, and Jubilees reveals both continuities and differences in their interpretations and significance. So, he wants to compare, because he wants to say, that they're competing on one another, like they're different. And I keep having to try to remind him 
were to treat all of it as if it's true. Theological and Cosmic Symbolism Analyzing the theological and cosmic symbolism of new moons across these texts provides a deeper understanding of their role in religious and apocalyptic thought. 5.2 Historical and Cultural Context Influence of Ancient Calendars A comparison of Israelite and Jewish understandings of new moons with those of neighboring cultures sheds light on the development of calendrical practices and their influence on religious observances. Evolution of Jewish Calendar Systems Tracing the evolution of new moon observances and their impact on Jewish liturgical practices provides insights into the continuity and changes in religious traditions. Conclusion This dissertation demonstrates that new moons hold profound religious, calendrical, and symbolic significance in both canonical and non-canonical texts. The analysis of the new moon feast in the Book of Samuel, alongside the calendrical and theological insights from 1 Enoch, 2 Enoch, and Jubilees, reveals the central role of the new moon in ancient Jewish life and thought. Summary of Findings Canonical texts, new moons are integral to marking significant festivals and times of worship, influencing key narrative events. Jubilees provides a detailed calendrical system that emphasizes the new moon's role in religious observance and covenantal themes. 1 Enoch and 2 Enoch offer apocalyptic and cosmic interpretations that highlight the new moon's importance in divine order and eschatological visions. And so they removed all of those books. You can't get to them. As of today. As of today. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe the... I was hoping that this, you know, service down and people are able to go back and look at it. Let me see if it's back on my phone. It's not on my phone. It's not on the internet. Book of Enoch. Book of Jubilee is the one that tells us how to tell time. Hmm? You ain't gonna get on chat GPT, are you? Because mm -hmm. it's gonna be five hours, two hours from now. Alright, well, alright, let's just read this part. I said, write a dissertation on the hidden books, Jubilees, Enoch, Jasher, and what they have in common. You wanna read it? We'll just read the abstract, see if it's worth reading the conclusion. This dissertation explores the apocryphal texts known as Jubilees, Enoch, and Jasher, collectively turned as the hymn books. These texts, though not included in the canonical Bible, offer valuable insights into early Jewish thought, biblical interpretation, and the development of religious traditions. By examining their content, themes, and historical context, this study aims to uncover what these books have in common and how they contribute to our understanding of the biblical tradition. Summary of findings. The hidden books Jubilees, Enoch, and Jasher share several commonalities, including themes of divine justice, human sin, and the role of intermediaries. Their narrative structure and theological concerns reflect the common effort to interpret and expand upon biblical stories in ways that address contemporary religious and social issues. What do you think? That's significant. Okay, write a comprehensive book about the divine justice, human sin, and the role of intermediaries from the perspective of those books. List all the verses used to make conclusions and do not include religious or traditional understandings. Use only the KJV Bible for other references. All right, now where are we at? Hey, why you work on that? Recommendations for future research exploration of additional texts Further study of lesser-known apocryphal and pseudepigraphal texts could offer deeper insights into new moon symbolism and observances. So we got to pray that those books come back. Because we ain't finna dig on nothing, right? Archaeological evidence, examination of artifacts and inscriptions related to new moon observances could enhance the historical understanding of ancient calendrical practices. Mm -hmm. So everybody get ready for the new moon tonight. Right. Right, let's get a look at the calendar before we go. So we have September the 5th, that's tomorrow, that'll be the celebration day. September the 4th, today, is when we should sight the new moon. Right. And if we get visual confirmation on it tonight, then we'll have uh, tomorrow for the um, celebration day. And it is a celebration day. Um, hopefully we'll get to talk about that more in another video. And then during the month, you have Ezekiel 8 and 1 
which we talked about that yesterday in the video last mm -hmm. night, Ezekiel 80 and 1. Mm -hmm. It's on the fifth day of the month. That's on a Sabbath day. That's on a um, regular Sabbath day. Now, for those who change Sabbath days monthly, of course, if the ones who change Sabbath days monthly, their days will go, what is that day? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. They'll be on Thursdays now. But for the rest of us on a quarterly schedule, we'll stay on Mondays. So Elul 5, September the 9th, the day that Ezekiel had his vision will fall. It fell on the Sabbath day too. Okay. Yeah, it fell on the Sabbath day too, more than likely. All right, so well, let's see anything else in there. You got Haggai 1 and 5 down there in um, September the 28th. That's when it corresponds to that. And then you have the Day of Remembrance, which is October the 4th. That's a big day going into the fall. That's actually the memorial blowing the trumpets, all according to the moon. Of course, you had to wait for the visualization of the moon. Mm -hmm. But that's um, the Day of Remembrance. That's the days that um, uh, Noah was talking about over there. And it almost saddened me that we can't get these books. Y'all pray for these books. We got to pray that we get these books back. This is a really big deal if... You know, somehow we're not able to get this information for some reason, any reason, whatsoever reason. So, um, with that, Stacey, I guess we're going to close this video out. Okay. If you got anything out of it, hit the like button. If you didn't, hit the dislike button, but leave a comment out of the way. And Shalawama. Shalawama. I think it's Shalaw. I think it's Shalom. I think Shalom might actually. Because the O makes the, the, that's the O. So it's Shalom. 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 Shalom, and, and they eventually got it Shalom. Mm -hmm. When you hear Shalom, you're supposed to put a W in there because of that long O. Wow. Well, so, shalom. Shalom.